اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم The Importance Performance Map Analysis Using Smart PLS In this session, we are going to look into how to perform the IPMA or Importance Performance Map Analysis using Smart PLS. Now, before we go on and analyze in Smart PLS, we need to understand the concept of Importance Performance Map Analysis. Now the purpose is to introduce the importance performance map analysis and explain how to use in the context of partial least squares structural equation modeling. The IPMA contrasts the total effects representing the predecessors or antecedent constructs importance in shaping the certain target construct that is your outcome with the average latent variable scores that indicate the performance. So there is a comparison of, of how important an antecedent construct is and how, how well is that particular con construct performing in shaping the target construct. Now the goal is to identify predecessors or antecedents or predictors that have relatively high performance for the target construct that is those that have a strong total effect now importance is the is the total effect of the antecedent construct but also have a relatively low performance that is they have low latent variable scores they are important but they are not performing well in explaining the target outcome the importance performance map analysis compares the total effects that is the importance and the average variable scores that is the performance of exogenous variables constructs or predictors whatsoever you want to call in terms of their impact on the target endogenous construct or the outcome adding the predecessor constructs direct and indirect effects yields their total effects on y4 let's say this is your endogenous construct y4 so if you add the direct effect and this indirect effect you will get the total effect on y4 for these constructs now in contrast these constructs average latent variable scores that we have seen earlier and we have used it in higher order constructs as well represents their performance in the sense that high values indicate greater performance so if a particular predictor antecedent predecessor construct has high performance this means that that particular construct is performing well in explaining the outcome now what is the concept of importance and performance importance refers to the perceived significance or importance of the various predictors or attributes in influencing the outcome variables. In many cases, importance is determined through surveys, interviews or other means of gathering stakeholder opinion or expert judgment. On the other hand, performance refers to how well the predictors or attributes, these predictors or attributes, how well these predictors and attributes or attributes are actually performing in achieving the desired outcome. So something may be very important for explaining the outcome, but it may not be actually performing in the, in the achievement of those desired outcomes. Now performance can be assessed through empirical data. In this case, yes, we are using or we are going to use surveys. An IPM, Importance Performance Map, is a visual tool used to help understand the relative importance of different factors, predictors, attributes to your customers as well as how well you are performing on those factors. So this is all about Importance Performance Map Analysis, assessing the importance of the predictors and how well are those predictors performing in explaining the outcome moving on 
The IPMA combines these two aspects graphically by contrasting the unstandardized total effects on x-axis. So this is your unstandardized total effect on x-axis with latent variable scores rescaled from 0 to 100 on y-axis. Now this is on y-axis. For the results interpretation, we focus on the constructs in the lower right area of the importance performance map. Now, this is the area where we should focus on. These constructs that exist here on the lower right corner. These constructs have high importance for the target const construct, but show a low performance. So they are very important for the target construct, but they are not performing really well because they are low on performance high on importance. Consequently, there is particularly high potential to improve the performance of the constructs positioned in this area. So this here, these constructs, you may have more than one here. These constructs can be improved. And once they, the, the organization, the management focus on these constructs, they can improve the performance of the outcome because it will improve the performance of the predictor and it can lead to the improvement in the performance of the outcome. Now, more precisely, a one unit increase in Y1 here, if we increase this Y1 performance, this increases the Y4, that is your dependent variable, that is your outcome by the value of one Y1's total effect. So let's assume if you want to increase the performance of Y4. So if you increase this Y1's performance by one unit, how much change will you see in the dependent variable or the outcome variable? That will be the total effect of Y1 on Y4. We will explain this with the help of the example later on. Now, since the performance of Y1 is relatively low here, Look at this. There is substantial room for improvement, making the aspect underlying this construct particularly relevant for managerial actions. While this introductory example shows an IPMA on the construct level, we can also do it on the indicator level as well. Moving on. Now there are different steps. One is requirements check. Number two, computation of performance values. Number three, computation of importance values. Number four, importance performance map creation. And finally, extension of IPMA on indicator level. Well, we do not need to perform them manually. Smart PLS will do it for us. Now, what are the requirements? Now, these, this, these steps are really important. What are the requirements for IPMA? importance performance map analysis. First, the rescaling of the latent variable scores on the range of 0 to 100 requires all the indicators in the PLS model to use metric or quasi-metric scale. So they have to be either metric or quasi-metric. In this case, we normally are using Likert scale. So they are or they can be referred to as quasi-metric scale. All the indicators coding must have the same scale direction. The minimum value on an indicator must represent the worst outcome and the maximum value must represent the best outcome. Otherwise, we cannot conclude the high or higher latent variable scores. Now, if you've got reverse items, make sure you reverse them before you do your analysis. Now, if the indicator coding has different directions compared to the other indicators in the measurement model. That is, high value represent a negative outcome. We must rescale the indicator. How to do it? For example, if it is on 1 to 5, then 1 will change to 5, 5 will change to 1, 2 will change to 4, 4 will change to 2, 3 will remain as it is, 4 will change to 2, and 5 will change to 1. So this is how you can rescale them or change the values of the indicator. If they are in opposite directions. Third, regardless of the measurement model being formatively or reflectively specified, the outer weights must be positive. Now, whether you have got a formative indicator or reflective indicators, the outer weights must be positive. Now, if the outer weights are negative, the latent variable scores will not fall between 0 to 100 range. 
but rather they will fall between let's say minus 5 to 95. Note that there are different reasons for unexpected negative auto weights. If an auto weight is negative and significant, the researcher should inspect the indicator and its scale. Maybe it's a reverse coded item, you need to rescale it. In case of non significant auto weights with negative signs, the researcher may consider removing those indicators. And finally, negative auto weights might be a result of high indicator collinearity. For example, variance inflation factor VIF values of 5 and higher indicate a potential collinearity issue. In this case, the researcher may also consider removing those indicators. Moving on. Now, the computation of performance values. Again, we do not need to do this. Smart PLS will do it for us. Just make sure that your indicators and their values are from and in the same direction for all the indicators. Importance values again, we do not need to do this. The reference paper will be shared in the description. If you want to know the whole process of computation of importance and performance values, you can surely read that paper. Now then the next step is map creation, which will be provided by smart PLS. Now, again, we have already looked into this. What we do is this particular graph is divided into four quadrants. This is low importance, low performance. This is high importance, low performance, and this is our starting point. This is what we are interested in. This here on the left top is your low importance, high performance, and here high importance, high performance. Now these two additional lines divide the importance performance map into four areas with importance and performance values below and above the average. Generally when anal analyzing the importance performance map constructs in the lower right area, these here are of high interest. Thereby, the importance performance map provides guidance for the prioritization of managerial activities of high importance for the underlying target construct, but which have low performance. Now, how do we run importance performance map analysis? Now, let's assume this is my model. Again, first, let's look at the requirements. PLS algorithm. All good. Let's start. Let's look at the outer weights. Are there any negative outer weights? No, there are no negative outer weights. So there is no issue. The requirements are fulfilled. Calculate importance performance map analysis. Now, my outcome here is loyalty. You can have different outcomes. So check your outcome that you are interested in. Now scale minimum and maximum and observed minimum and maximum. Now all of them are one to five. This scale minimum and maximum should be the lowest and the highest one, one to five. So you can change it here, adjust the data file. If there are any that are not in that particular range. So go to setup and here, if you want to change it, you can change and click update. Let's go back. Again, loyalty PLS set him set up unstandardized type of results. All good. We can start now. Now, where are our results? So let's look at our map first. Here is my map importance performance map. Now, if you look here, this, these two are the ones we can say they are performing or they have got high importance, but they are quite low on performance. So if the managers or the management or the administration wants to improve the performance of the outcome, they can work on these predictors. Now, which are these predictors? Number one, orange commitment. They can work on commitment to improve the loyalty. They can further work on the service innovation to improve the loyalty in their study setting. Now moving on, and that's the same graph here. I've just copied it into the PowerPoint. Now let's explain this. The importance performance map, this figure here, not four. 
shows the commitment has relatively low performance. So I'm taking the example of commitment here. Look at this. Quite low, but its importance is quite high. This one is low as well. In comparison with other constructs, commitment performance is slightly below average. On the other hand, the total effect importance of this construct is particularly high. So where is the importance? Look at this. 0.425. It's quite high. Therefore, one unit increase in commitment's performance. So if we increase the performance of commitment by one unit, where is commitment? Here. This is the performance of commitment, 49.630. So if we increase it from 49.630 to 50.630, that is your predictor, commitment. If we increase its performance, then that will increase the performance of loyalty, that is your dependent variable. By how much? By this much, 0.425, by the total effect. So your performance for loyalty will increase from 58.961 plus 0 0.425 and that will give you 59.386. This is your rescaled latent variable score for loyalty. Now let's assume, let me give you another example. So this is service innovation here. What is the performance of service innovation here? 55.662. Now, if I want to increase the performance of loyalty here, and this is my service innovation. So one unit increase in service innovation performance from 55.662 to 56.662 would increase the performance of loyalty by how much? Look at this, here it is, 0.617. So if you want to increase the performance of loyalty, you can increase the performance of service innovation. So let's say I want to increase the loyalty based on my service innovation. So one unit increase in, now in this case, it's not commitment, it's a service innovation. Let's write service innovation. So one unit increase in service innovation performance from, what is the service innovation performance? It's 55.662. Here it is. Here, look at this first one. This is the performance. And if I increase it from 55.662 to 56.662, this would increase the performance of loyalty by how much? Look at this. Where is it? Here it is, service innovation to loyalty by 0.617. So what happens is that importance of service innovation, this is the importance of service innovation, and this will increase the performance of loyalty by from 58.961, let's add how much? The effect, 0 0.617, 0 0.617, and just add it and you will get the performance of loyalty. So this is how you can do this calculation as to what will happen to the performance of the outcome based on the change of the performance of the predictor. Moving on, the next step, you can look do it at indicator level as well. So look at this, where is your indicator level? Here it is, this is the indicator level. Now if you look here, these are quite important but not performing at all. So the management or the managers can focus on these indicators and if they improve these indicators, the performance of these indicators, the performance on the outcome will increase. And the same formula will apply. A one unit increase in an indicator's performance increases the performance of the outcome by the indicator's importance value. So you can add the importance value to the performance of the outcome if you change the one unit performance on these indicators. I hope this session would have helped you understand how to perform importance performance map analysis using Smart PLS. Thank you very much.